So today we're going to look at changing a potentiometer. And this is concealed behind the panel on the side of the um, actuator itself. Now irrespective of whether it's the gear or the throttle potentiometer, the process is exactly the same. So we can see the potentiometer and the drive motor for the actuator. So whether you have a throttle potentiometer to change or a clutch actuator to change, you need to make sure that the handle is absolutely at 90 degrees to the top of the um, the actuator here so and you do that by just revolving the gear until it is it's, it's, it's at 90 degrees as you can see now if it's the throttle poten um, potentiometer you're changing then it means you've got to wind all the way up so it's in the same position okay so once we've got to that state where the handle is at 90 degrees to the bottle the process for changing the actuator is exactly the same so the first thing you need to do is to remove the plug connector for the potentiometer which is this one here which is just going to do Okay, while changing the uh, potentiometer, if you suspect that's the case, it's always worth measuring um, what the board is seeing at the same time. And you can, we've got a little socket here that we use to do this, but you can do it just by measuring with your meter leads directly on the plug to see what the um, board is reading across the pot. So uh, on a cobalt uh, potentiometer, green is the wiper, white is VRF plus, and black is VRF negative. And on the potentiometer, they're always wired green to number two, white to number one, and black to number three, with very few exceptions, but just always check that to be sure. So what we've got on across the trim potentiometer is 3.756 in one direction and 3.620 in the other. So about 150 ohms difference through the trim potentiometer. Now let's disconnect that and measure across the potentiometer on the side of the actuator. That's got 2683 in one direction. And in the other way, it's got 2697 so it's only about 14 ohms difference um, on the back of the, the actual potentiometer but about 150 ohms difference on the trim so you might well uh, suspect that the trim potentiometer wants changing at some point but let's deal with that in another video okay so we're going to desolder the um, the wires from the back of the potentiometer it's always worth noting where the potentiometer is in the bracket so that when you put it back into the uh, the, the actuator the wires are going to reach back on and you can solder them in in the same position again um, if you've got it twisted 180 degrees whatever then you've got to try and stretch these wires to uh, to get to it so note the position of the potentiometer in the bracket so that when you put the new one in uh, you, you get it you get the wires uh, nicely soldering down onto the back of the pot note that we're using a, a bench uh, type soldering station here, temperature at about 375 uh, centigrade. Once you've desoldered the potentiometer, you can then go in and unscrew the, uh, the bracket that holds it in. Okay, and then the, the, yeah, the screws are very small there, and generally they're locked tight in, so they should, should feel a bit of resistance against there. And then what's going to happen then is that the whole potentiometer, with its bracket and its gear, is able to be lifted out of the uh, of the actuator make a note of uh, a mental note of where the, the gear is on the shaft and then you can put that back to the roughly the same position and i'm talking about the distance then between the gear and the bracket um so that you can put it back in the roughly the same position before you put it back in the body of the actuator this is uh, absolutely a 16th allen key um, and you need to use the square end of the allen key and not a ball end to undo the um, the grub screw, otherwise it will turn on it. Uh, usually there's two of those on there, and occasionally on the head pots you'll also find there's a slightly larger, what was it, only 532, 564. 564 yeah. So you need to have a good 16th and a good 564 Allen key available to change potentiometers, whether they be in the actuator or the, con or the control head. You need to remove the potentiometer from the bracket. Um, we've got some specially um, modified or, or I think it might be divers uh, adjustables, which are very narrow. Not absolutely essential for doing the um, actuator potentiometers but for the control head where you don't have any room to get uh, get it off you have to redraw it while it's in the head uh, the, the thin nature of the adjustables is, is uh, very good it's either that or a spanner that you've um, filed down or ground down so this is a new potentiometer that we just got out of the bag and um, you have to prepare it by cutting let's get the phone set right there by cutting this small pip let's get it so we can see it on the, the thing let's take that off for a second so you have to cut off that pip, which in other locations helps to, uh, or in other applications helps to locate it, but in ours it stops it from going flush to the back of the bracket. So if you just use a sharp knife and just cut that away, like that, so it's nice and smooth, 
and you can see now that that's not going to hinder us from mounting the uh, bracket against the potentiometer squarely. Okay, so um, once we've cut that tab off, you can then feed the potentiometer through the bracket. Note that the bracket uh, has got a, a side that goes into the actuator and the side where the pot goes. So the pot goes on a smooth side and the actuator side is this side, that's the way it goes in. So then just put that uh, back on there as it, as it was. And then just having a check on the orientation of the um, pot as we discussed about where the wires are going to solder on. Once you're happy with where that is, turn that around to the, to the sort of right point and then tighten that up in the in the body with reasonable amount of, uh, of force. Okay, then reapply the gear onto the uh, onto the shaft. As I said, roughly the sort of same position, maybe a bit further along. So nip the pot up on the on the shaft in either one or two positions, depending on how many screws it's got in there. So on, in our case it's only got the the one but you can see there's a hole there where you could have a second one. <coughs> and then generally what we do is to find the mid resistance point. Um, it always gets knocked when you put it into the body of the potentiometer but it's worthwhile just setting it up roughly um, central. Now the pots are 5k pots but normally you'll find they're about 2.55 or 2.6 um, ohms at the centre. So we set it to about 2.55, something like that. As I say, it'll always get knocked, but at least if it's only sort of one or two teeth out, then you can um, move it around quite easily. So then feed the potentiometer back into the body of the actuator, and then uh, make sure that it's coming up towards the gears on the on the, the driven gear for the pot. Now, importantly, before you go any further, you should make sure that the pot uh, gear and the gear that's driving that are at the same level, so they're nicely meshed. Okay, now you can't really see that here, but you can put your, uh, you can, s this one is probably a, a couple of millimetres too high yet, I don't know if you can see that on the video, so we're going to just take that back out again and just put it a couple of millimetres further down the shaft. So we're happy now that the um, potentiometer gear is at the same depth as the driven gear for the potentiometer. So once it's in the body like that, the first thing to do now is check the resistance again to see if we've got to make any crude adjustments to the, the teeth to uh, keep it at uh, roughly mid position. Now what we want to achieve is it for it to be roughly at mid position with the screw holes in the centre as much as possible of the slot in the bracket because the slot in the bracket is the means by which we fi finally adjust the, uh, the, the resistance over both sides of the pot. So if uh, we now measure that uh, resistance, so we've got 2.52 one way and the other way we've got 2.62. Now we'll slip that one and maybe come like that. Yeah, so we're about 100 ohms adrift, but actually 100 ohms is probably more than one tooth. Yeah, we're pretty close now actually, look, because it was slightly one-sided. Okay, so probably so more than, we're we, we are probably uh, at the position where we don't want to change. So if we were sort of three or 400 ohms adrift, what we'd do is we would just push back the um, the potentiometer a little bit from the gear, and then use a either an Allen key or a screwdriver just to move that gear round one or two teeth, and then put it, mesh it back in, and then measure again. But as we are at the moment, we're where we want to be as far as the initial setup of it. So what we now do is to put the screws back into the bracket to hold it fundamentally in place. So we're going to screw the uh, screws back into the potentiometer bracket. You can see that during this process we've just moved the um, the lever out of the slot in the cam to give ourselves a bit more room, also it's not so tight when we're trying to work in this in this square where the potentiometer is. So we've not actually moved the position of the actuator, but we've just pulled the lever into the manual override position or in the manual operation position. Um, so that we could give ourselves a bit more room, just so there's no confusion there. The most important things about the uh, potentiometer fitment, whether it be in the actuator or in the control head, is that you cannot have the, the potentiometer too tight up to the driven gear, because if you do, you introduce side load into the pot and you drastically re reduce the life cycle of the potentiometer. So you can see that what we're doing is we're just using a small screwdriver or something just to push it back and forwards. At the moment, it's probably just a touch too much uh, play there, so we'll use the adjustment of the bracket just to uh, bring it a little bit closer, but you have to have uh, clear movement in between those gears, otherwise you, um, you will introduce some side load and then say you would drastically reduce the, the life of the potentiometer. Just going to look at the uh, resistance now, now we've screwed it in, and it's just going to give us the, the uh, resistance figure. So we've got 2577, and then 2 to 3, we've got 2627, so we're about 50 out. Ideally we want to be 
plus or minus 25, I, I yeah. bet. Within, yeah, I would say within 20 right. ohms as a, as a target. Um, if we end up at 25 ohms as a, as a, as a range, that's fine. Um, so we're just going to use the, the aspect of being slightly loose on the bracket and just use the screwdriver just to adjust it rotationally and also um, into the, the pot as well. So we're now 2584 and 2628. So we're still um, 44 odd ohms of drift. So we want to try and halve that to amount of area. And just to show you that again, we're just using, we've just got these screws slightly loose, but not uh, loose. Little, and then we're a little bit sloppy, so we can move the whole thing that way. Using the tiny screw just to make the adjustments to it to rotate it and also to push it into the gear as well. So let's have a look now at the adjustment we've got, or the figures we've got. Yeah, so we've gone the other way a little bit, I think. Yeah, yeah so we need so to bring that down to about 50 ohms of drift at the moment. Gone, gone the other way, so I'm just going to. So this is quite. Um, fiddly but it's it's essential we get it to uh, as good as we can really as i say the target should be less than 20 ohms so that's so better more like it so we're about 30 ohms yeah. of drift now and just make another adjustment so we've got the potentiometer now to be 2595 and 2602 so within six at 2601 so within six ohms measuring between two and one or two and three okay so now what we do is again check the um clearance between the gear and the main gear and it's a bit much isn't it? it's a touch too much so we're going to just adjust that just a little bit more okay so um we've adjusted that again so we're down at 2.95 and 2. Point, or 2.601 so six ohms difference that's great and we've got just a nice bit of play between the I get you a good shot on that. But nice bit of play between the gear and the, the main gear. Yeah. Right, and then just <coughs> so don't what, take it out. What we're going to do now is to screw down the potentiometer tight ish, but not completely tight. And then what we'll do is we'll take one screw out at a time, put a little dab of Loctite on, and um, and then once we're happy then that we've Loctited that bracket in place, uh, we're just using a, a medium strength Loctite here now. A bit much, but. So screw that one down nice and tight. And then we'll do the same with the, the next one. Now this whole job can be done in situ with the uh, actuator in place, but obviously you've got to have relatively good access to the side of the actuator to do that. Um, if, you, if it's not that much aggro to take the actuator off, it's always better to do this on the bench um, where you've got some better light and, and what have your conditions and you, you can do it, you know, stood up and, and comfortable, etc. But, um, you know, many a time we have to do this on site with the actuator in situ. So both those screws are now tightened down. So now we've got to do one final check on the resistance <coughs> to make sure that we haven't to move the bracket in pursuit of, of doing that. And you can see we've still got 2595 and 2602. So that's, that's excellent. So what we're now going to do is to reconnect the resolder the wires onto the potentiometer. <coughs> you solder both bits and then just heat the two up together. Okay, so, you, okay. so you don't have to have a hand holding the solder. Then. Okay. So there's the wires nicely soldered back onto the uh, potentiometer. Um, what we're going to do is measure the resistance again there now, and then we'll measure the resistance on the back end again. Okay, so we've got 2597 and 2590. So we've still got a gap there of about 6 ohms. Um, and we're just going to double check the resistance on the back here again. <coughs> we've got two, uh, 3.622. And 3.533. So again, we still got 90 to 100 ohms difference on that, which is, you know, we obviously we haven't changed the trim potentiometer yet, so that's what we probably expect to happen. But uh, importantly, we've we've changed the potentiometer in there. Now, don't worry about the handle position. If this is the throttle side you've been doing, as soon as you fire up the actuator in the system, it will go back to its uh, set position for the throttle. So um, that's it. That's the potentiometer changed out and aligned correctly in the actuator. Um, if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, the last part obviously is to reapply the cover. Uh, in another video we'll also uh, cover checking the motor brushes. And of course the last thing to do is to uh, reapply the plug in the board. Now it's absolutely essential that you get that squarely in the board, you know, so that, so that it's in line as it was before. Because we have had it before where um, the plug's put, been back, put back in the board and there's been one step out and that, that can cause a serious problem to the board and uh, so we don't want to avoid that. So make sure when you reapply the plug that it's um, in its socket firmly and that it's uh, correctly aligned 
to uh, to it to its socket. Okay.